You are listening to the One Day at a Time podcast. On this podcast, my guests share their stories of alcoholism, addiction, and how they recovered so that you can too. My hope is that you find the inspiration and resources you need to let go of what's holding you back so that you can transform into the person you were always meant to be. Ready? Here we go. For those of us in recovery, the relationships we have with our parents can be complicated, especially if your parent was absent or if they had a lot of trauma. Today, I'm honored to share a conversation with Caroline Beidler and her mother, Diana Dallas. They wrote a book together called You Are Not Your Trauma, Uproot Unhealthy Patterns, Heal the Family Tree. It will help you identify unhealthy patterns that keep you stuck and so that you can live more freely without your trauma. For me, this was such a powerful conversation. I was on the verge of tears multiple times. Their openness and vulnerability with each other was so touching. And the book is amazing. It's part memoir, part science, and part workbook. It covers topics that include codependency, perfectionism, people-pleasing, and burnout, to name a few. They are just really an example of people who are open-hearted, open-minded, and they have worked through so much stuff and really just have such an amazing relationship now. Anyway, I'm really excited to share this conversation with you. So without further delay, please enjoy this episode with Caroline and Diana. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining me today. So excited to be here. So nice to see you again. Good to see you too. And so good to meet you, mom. Can I call you mom? (laughs) It's nice to be here. (laughs) Yeah. No, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I feel like so many of us um, have a complicated relationship with our, with our moms. And it's so nice to be a witness to how relationships can heal and evolve and grow and change and really blossom into what we always wanted our relationships with mom to be. And I'm not saying that there isn't always room for growth, but gosh, it's so amazing that you are willing to show up and participate. And I can't wait to sort of dig into the book that y'all did together. So the book title is You Are Not Your Trauma, Uproot Unhealthy Patterns and Heal the Family Tree. There it is. If you're watching this on the, if you're listening to this on the podcast, Caroline has a copy. It's it's really beautiful. Um, And I see that you have it in a print behind you. I do. Yes. Genius. Mm -hmm. I am going to totally steal that idea when I publish my book. (laughs) So smart to have that in the background like that. Um, Let's start. Like we got Caroline's story in a previous episode. So mom, I'm really interested in hearing about, you know, maybe we can start from when you started noticing that Caroline was having issues and it could be either things that you noticed as a little girl, or uh, maybe we start there and then kind of trans and transition into things you started to witness when um, she was drinking and using. Well, I, I would say as a child, she was pretty, Caroline was pretty quiet and reserved. Um, in my background, I mean, it's one thing that stands out in my head when she was a little girl, it's like we, my husband and I at the time would not even allow her to walk in the yard because we were, were afraid she would fall off the, the edge of the, um, the yard, which was a drop off. So she grew up, you know, I had fear inside of me. So I, I noticed the fear in her as she was growing up. Um, And my husband and I got divorced, her dad and I got divorced, and um, can you hold that for just a minute? Are you having Um, a feeling? Well, we we got divorced, and at the time, I felt like she would be better, she and her, her brother would be better off being raised by their dad. Full time. Oh, so she, so she and and her brother live um, full time with their dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and interesting enough, what was happening at that time that that I left him, memories of my trauma were starting to come up. 
Um, and so I think that really influenced my decision to leave. Mm -hmm. um, it, and I didn't realize that it was my trauma that was coming up. I just thought these were, I don't know really what I thought at the time, but I didn't think of it in terms of my trauma because I didn't remember my trauma until oh, wow. later on. Yeah. So um, Caroline, so I wasn't aware that she was um, drinking and in some of the behaviors that she had, I didn't know those kinds of things were going on mm -hmm. until later. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been sort of a source of shame for me that I, um, I kind of felt like we were growing up together. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that sounds rather odd, but I really didn't feel like I was there emotionally for um, her and her brother. And I felt like I was I was growing up. So I missed some of the signs that I had I been more available and open hearted, I would have noticed some of the signs. Um, but then as as she did get into some of the addictive behaviors, I I kind of came, I realized what was happening at that point. Um, and I could see some of my issues in my life, I could see them in her, like the eating disorder, relationship problems. And it was then that I was realizing what exactly was going on and how the way I was living my life with many relationships, how that was affecting her and, and her brother. Um, so it's, it's kind of like I became, instead of being so self-absorbed with my own trauma, at one point, I was able to step out of that and and see her trauma. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Um, I kind of want to go back to thank. By the way, thank you for sharing that. I know that that's not that it's not easy to kind of go over all that stuff, but um, you know, I I saw all your sadness around the decision to leave. And the idea, and the reason why I'm asking about this, because I have heard that so many times from other women, this idea of, you know, the kids would be better off if I wasn't there. And sometimes, you know, um, people find the courage to, you know, leave thinking, but it's rooted in this idea of they would be better off because I'm not good enough. Right. And that is yeah. sad. That is sad. Right. And it sounds like you've, you it's know, sad. come to a place. I mean, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but would it be fair to say that you've kind of come to a place of acceptance of that woman that you used to be when you made that decision? It's been a, a process and mm -hmm. I've carried a lot of shame about that. Yeah. Um, it still touches my heart when I talk about it. So I haven't totally healed from that decision, but it's something I've been working on over many years. Yeah. Thank you so much for just sharing that because, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the women that listen to this podcast are women who have struggled with addiction as mothers. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so there's a lot of shame that's associated. So I just want to thank you for your courage because I feel like when we can identify that I'm not alone or unique in this experience of feeling not good enough and not good enough shows up in lots of ways, but I really feel like that sort of um, helps people feel connected. So I just, I just want to thank you for being willing to sort of go there for a minute and, and, uh, and, you know, acknowledge that really it was the trauma that mm -hmm. was making you leave, not necessarily that exactly. what you thought, what you thought was actually true. Right. It exactly. seems like there's a difference. So um, yep. that's really yep. important. And um, yeah, as far as, you know, not being there to notice the signs, I mean, it's, it sounds like at some point, like Caroline's behavior was, um, not something you could easily ignore. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we all I had to get to that place, right? Yeah. That I remember one song. one one particular time. Um and it was when you know she was probably she was in high school and she was living with me at that time. Um 
that she left a bottle, an empty bottle of, I think it was peach snobs, like right on the floors. I couldn't miss it. I had no idea she was drinking. And it's like Freudian slip. Oh, it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. So so she she wanted me to notice, but it took it took it in my face for me to realize that that's what was going on. Yeah, that that seems fair. Caroline, how good did you get at being sneaky? Well, I was just (laughs) laughing to myself because I'm like, there was a lot more than peach schnapps going on in that little apartment room. (laughs) A lot. But Um, yeah, you're you're pretty sneaky. Like we go to great lengths to cover our tracks. Oh gosh. I mean, such great lengths. And yes, I got to a point where it was like unmistakable and really hard to miss that I was struggling with my substance use. Uh, disorder. And, you know, I have to say, mom, too, I just want to say, I think it's so courageous and bold to be able to be so vulnerable and come out and share some of those really hard things. And I think part of, you know, writing the book together has been such Mm -hmm. an incredible journey of healing. And like my mom said, it's a process and we're still Mm -hmm. healing. Um, But it's just such a beautiful thing to, to be able to watch my mom and see her journey. And it's been really inspiring to me. And you know, I, I, as a mom myself now, I can understand how hard that decision to leave Mm -hmm. would have been. And I am so grateful for my mom for making the hard decision to stay and show up when I was struggling with my addiction, Mm -hmm. because she said, my parents, my dad and stepmoms was like, I'm done with you all. I'm done with you. And my mom opened her, her door, you know, and at that time it was, I think right it was like a one bedroom apartment. She she moved into the living room. I was in the bedroom. I mean, she like, you know, sacrificed a lot for me to be able to stay there. She drove me to treatment for the first time. I still have the little so cute, this little red yeah. bear um that she bought me on the way to tra- I slept with that little bear until I'm not even going to admit how old I was when I quit sleeping with that little bear, but my hu- my son now sleeps with it. Yeah. And it oh, oh really? Yes. And it's falling yeah, apart, yeah. but it is so sweet. And I love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom has shown up in so many ways. Um, so yeah, just I just wanted to say that too, that it's even though we can struggle with our trauma symptoms and it can, you know, lead us to make decisions we may regret or feel shame about, we can also heal from our trauma. And that is a really helpful thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really beautiful. Um you know, and, and sometimes that's a testament to how we can utilize pain, right. In the sense that it was painful for you that you weren't be able, you weren't able to be there for her in the way that you wanted to, but Mm -hmm. because you had that pain, um, when it came time, you were able to endure things that maybe you wouldn't have, um, before. So Mm -hmm. I feel like there's always a, we can always turn our pain into some kind of purpose. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and Diana, when did you start uh recognizing that you had trauma? Like how did that show um, up? Like why did he why did it even come up? It because I started having memories that I didn't understand. Um it, I guess one of the 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 main thing is that um I had some memories before I left my husband, but I also I went to a workshop like shortly after I had left and the woman went around to all of us and said, you know, why are you here at this workshop? And it was a spiritual workshop. Um, And and when she said that and came to me, I had an image of, of some trauma that I had been through. And it's like, at that point, it was undeniable. Then it's like the pieces of my life started fitting into place. I could make sense out of of why I did what I did. Um, So that's kind of how it all started. And then then I went through a a lot of therapy um, with myself or or myself and my family. Um, So so it's been a long, kind of a long drawn out um, process for me. 
I, I don't think there's any kind of trauma therapy that isn't long and drawn out. It's, <laughs> it's, it's it, it takes time to just I mean, sort of say that again, right? It, 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 mm-hmm. it takes a long time to unravel all that mess at, at for, and then it even takes time to feel safe enough where we even mm-hmm. can just even put a foot on the journey. And I'm so curious, um, did you write about your traumatic experiences in the book? I didn't, I didn't know. Um, well, I, I wrote about things that happened as a result of the trauma. I didn't go uh. into detail about my trauma that, and, and really because that, you know, as we see it, that's not the purpose of the book to go into detail about our trauma. It's so that other people can realize it and relate to their trauma um, and maybe they can relate to my behavior because of my trauma, but I don't, I don't feel it's necessary to go into all the details of the trauma. Uh, yeah, not all the details. Um, could we, I don't want to, I don't want you to say anything you don't want to say, but I do think it's important to maybe, um, uh, maybe identify like a category of the trauma. Like, um, was it, uh, domestic violence? Was it like, a car kind of trauma or is the abusive parents kind of trauma? Like what kind of category are we, are we talking about? I would say, um, abuse of, um, sexual types of things. Okay. Um, emotional. as an adult or in childhood? Um, probably both. Okay. I, I, I won't ask you anymore, but I just, yeah, yeah. I, I do, yeah. I do, um, I do see a little teeny value, like s- stories are the things that kind of people go, oh my God, that happened to me too. Right. So I don't want you to say anything you don't want to say, you know, um, but uh, that's why I ask. It's not mm-hmm. to embarrass mm-hmm. you or make you uncomfortable. No, I understand. I yeah. understand. Like yeah. I talk about yeah. um, my whole phase when I was drinking and apparently a lot of people relate to that. So I now think it's hilarious, but um, other people go, oh, yeah, I did that too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you have it. Okay, but thank you for sharing because I think when people think, sure. you mm-hmm. know, trauma, it can be kind of ethereal and we don't really know what it means. And exactly. how do you feel like that type of trauma affected your identity or your place in the world? I feel like that trauma caused me to back up and to not want to be seen. It caused me me to be numb. Mm. Um, It caused me to feel unsafe in my own life. Um, I would say just recently I've been able to feel safe around people that, um, around other family. Um, It's taken a while. But it really, it really did have an impact on my life. Yeah. Did the um, not feeling safe in family, was that uh, like, have you set boundaries with um, like your family of origin? Yeah. And and, um, because I feel like family is so hard, right? It's so hard. Like when you go into recovery and you start growing and you start recognizing that you have boundaries, right? And then as you grow and change, those boundaries are kind of shifty sometimes. How did how did you recognize that you had you needed to set boundaries and how did you go about setting them? Well, I I think I I tried to be perfect, first of all. I tried to be everything that everybody wanted in my family. You know, I mm. I worked harder. Um, I did things everybody wanted. And it was when my body came to the point where I could not do it anymore. My body said, stop. You know, this is like just burnout. too much. Yes, totally mm. burnt out. Um then I realized, and that not only happened with my family, it happened at work. You know, I was the one people would come to with all their problems. It just got to be overwhelming. And at that point, I had to start taking care of myself, which I hadn't done previously. I, I was looking for love in places where people didn't have it to give. Um, and, and, you know, 
I was kind of like pounding on the door, you know, give me this, give me love. And, and it's like they couldn't. And, yeah. and at some point I realized it has to come from inside me. I have to be yeah. the one who lost myself. I can't get it from these people out here. And second of all, they don't know how to give it any more than I do. Um, all right. So that was a, a realization. And some of it came from writing this book. Um, I bet. Oh my gosh. Oh, it, it's it, some of some of the questions and the exercises that Caroline has in the book I've done myself. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's it's very healing. Um I use the book myself. I I I'll never say that I'm totally healed because I'm not. Um, I don't think there's such a thing. <laughs> I, I mean, don't think I kinda, there is either. <laughs> I kind of came to the conclusion that there's sort of um, evolution and mm-hmm. then there's healing, right? Because we mm-hmm. always grow and evolve, but mm-hmm. healing kind of, for in my mind, um, is about reframing trauma or like making yeah. peace with the past, things like that. Um, so, so tell me, how did you guys decide, maybe Carol, I'll ask you, cause you're the, you know, you're the seasoned writer. How did you guys go about writing this together? Did you meet Wheatley? Did you, do you guys live each live near each other? No, we don't. My mom no. is still in Wisconsin where I grew up and I'm okay. in Tennessee. So there are states okay. between us. And I have to st- say too, I want to clarify, my mom is actually the seasoned writer. Oh. She's been writing way longer oh, than sorry. I've ever just not, no, it's okay. Just not, um, this is our first published book, uh, together. So, uh, but so interestingly, you know, my first book came out downstairs church and I didn't really know, you know, if I was going to continue writing, but I, I was writing and all of a sudden one day I went out to the mailbox and I opened the mailbox and there was this giant manila envelope filled. It was like huge. And I'm like, what is this? And who still sends things in giant manila envelopes? <laughs> my mom had sent me pages upon pages of her writing of things that she had written. Wow. Um, it was kind of a partial unfinished man or manuscript and some other things. And I started reading and I was floored because she did not know this, but at the same time I was writing about my past and I was writing about trauma wow. and I started reading this and I remember calling my mom and I'm like, you know, I don't know exactly like why you sent, you know, why did you send this? I was asking her, but you know, she gave you any heads up that it was coming. (laughs) I don't remember that. And maybe you did not, but I just remember this kind of like surprise. No, I don't think I did. Yeah. But I just, I just remember thinking to myself, like we can do something with this. And so I kind of, I think I approached you and was like, do you, you know, want to write a book together? Um, Mm -hmm. So we, you know, and then I started, it was almost like putting a puzzle piece together. So we didn't start mm-hmm. with an outline, which a lot of, you know, I'm definitely going to do that with my next book, but, um, you know, putting a puzzle piece together and seeing it, how it fits. And what we ended up doing was, as my mom mentioned, you know, there's a series of five rhythms in the book. So it's very much like an active experience with mm-hmm. the reader. There's questions, there's exercises all from like my background with, um, you know, I have a social work degree and was trained a mental health provider. I haven't been practicing, um, but, you know, based on that, my own experience. And then throughout the book, my mom has these beautiful interludes that really read as like excerpts from a journal, um, you know, the tone and style changes, you know, I mean, it's these beautiful pieces and, you know, mom, you don't go through like detail of the trauma, but just going back into like childhood and some really deep experiences and then watching her evolution through the book from her place of really living in these trauma symptoms to kind of understanding and finding her voice through experience, you know, through experiences. So I don't know, it's, well, I love it because it's our book and like writing a book with your mom about such a deep and vulnerable topic. It's, it's, amazing. And this is like one of the highlights of, of my life. And now we get to sit and have these conversations. I mean, we kind of joke sometimes it's like, you know, when I was in my twenties and she was, were you, well, I guess like forties, forty. Like 40s, mm-hmm. 50s, mm-hmm. we used to kind of bop around together, drink our chai, you know, we'd have these, like, we, we joke, we went through this period where we like to put on long flowing skirts and we'd like drink our tea and go sit by the lake and talk about writing, you know, writing and publishing a book and the fact that we're doing it today is just like unbelievable. It's so mm-hmm. amazing. So yeah, so that's a little bit about how the book came to be. And here, here we are. 
That's amazing. I, I'm so curious as you're reading through the material, did you get mad? Was there any time you were just like mm. pissed off about anything that you read? Like, you know, she's like, oh, I needed to leave because of this. And you're like, fuck you. I needed you to stay. <laughs> like, that, well, I'm only projecting yeah. because that's how yeah, I would have been. Yeah, that's how. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if we, and we, we did, we had some hard conversations and I wrote very candidly about how I mm -hmm. felt being, you know, abandoned and left as a child. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think mom, we had several conversations where you were, you know, in tears and we're working through yeah. some of those stuff again, because it does, it drags back some of that back up. And I think now that I'm a mother, especially it, it kind of gives me a different perspective on it. Um, but I think when we can face our feelings of anger and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, lack like unforgiveness and shame, like we just are brought to a new level of healing. And we talk a lot yeah. in the book about movement. Like there's rhythms in the book that will move us towards healing. And for me, like our journey in writing this at the same time, we're trying to offer other people a movement of healing. Like we were moved to heal. Yeah. We're still being moved to heal. <laughs> yes, um, we are. You know, mm -hmm. through, through the process together. So it's, there have been hard moments, but it's been amazing. Mom, I don't it's know. Been Oh, it's been totally worth it. it. It's an honor for me to write the book with you um, and to have you be as open and vulnerable. And And I appreciate you writing about your deepest feelings. Um, I would be angry if my mother did, you know, left me or quote, abandoned me. Um, so I I get that. It's It's been hard sometimes, but I'm so thankful that that we're able to talk about it that's brought a great healing at least to me um, oh, probably sure. to both of us yeah it's so interesting um I recently had a situation in my family where I had to bring up some uncomfortable feeling like you know resentments I was having towards a member of my family and their response is always to crumple like a tin can and I had to be like hey you know what I just need to be able to express my feelings without you falling apart did you guys have to, what was it like for you to, Caroline, to sh share your anger? And did you ask for any, um, did you have to let your mom know it was hard for you to see her be sad? Or how did that go down for you? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Because I think we've, we've kind of, at least, you know, from my perspective, I've, I have worked a lot and done a lot of forgiving. I've done you know, therapy and I've been in recovery for a while. And I think that that has helped me kind of reframe a lot of those experiences and see mm -hmm. them, you know, with new eyes. So I think writing about it was kind of digging some of it up, but like my feeling of be of forgiving my mom was still there, you yeah. know? So like when she, mom, when you were upset, um, maybe having some of those feelings coming up again, or, some things like that, I feel like I could really listen more with compassion and see my mom as a woman mm -hmm. who made choices because of her trauma, because I've done that too, you know? Yeah. And I, I talk a lot in my book about, and I was telling my mom, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe my neighbors are going to read this. Like I do talk <laughs> about some details, especially around sex and relationships, which is like, you know, um, it's hard. It's hard it, to be so details, honest. But... Yeah. Details that are in the book. So yeah, since like, you already wrote uh, it, like that's an example. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but I don't know. It, it feels good to be so vulnerable and it feels good to be able to say today, like, because, because of my recovery and because I've been working on this, like I can see my mom as, as a woman and yeah. not just see her as a mistake. And I can see myself that way too. You know, I am not, and just like the oh, book said, I'm not my trauma. You know, my mom's not yeah. in trouble. Um, yeah. I think it's interesting when we, when we have difficult, it's like the question then becomes like, how do you have a, a, a like a hard conversation? Right. And um, I think in, you know, as a facilitator myself, you know, when I'm talking to people, it's like, okay, you process all your stuff, you bring it to the person. Um, and, you know, just like heads up, you have to give them some space so that they can have, like, they need to be able to have a feeling too. Mm -hmm. Right. And whatever that feeling is to just be present with it and try not to judge it. It's, it can be really challenging. Yeah. Well, I just have to say, I, I feel like if you're, 
are you a therapist? I know you're a coach because I feel like I want to sign up for whatever offering you're giving. Um, because- <laughs> I've had a, I've <laughs> I had a mean, lot of therapy. So much wisdom. No, 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 really. I <laughs> mean, with coaching, like I just, that's, yeah, that's really insightful. Oh, thank you. So um, was it, was it hard? Like, and I, this could go to either one of you, but maybe I'll ask mom first. Was it hard for you to um, experience her feelings as she was like, if all the details are in the book and I would imagine you read them, what was it like for you to, um, be aware of her experience? I, I, to be honest, I was shocked about, about quite a bit of it. Um, because I didn't realize what was going on with her. Mm. So it was, and then, of course, I went from shock to feeling like, oh, my gosh, I wasn't there. So then I went into shame. Um, and then it's like, you know, I have to just I wouldn't make the same decisions that I made then. I would not make them now. But I have to forgive the woman that made them. Um, so that's what I eventually came to. It's like I can't understand how I could you know, walk out the door and leave my two little ones with my ex-husband. I How could I possibly have done that? Today, that's incomprehensible to me. I just can't even fathom it. But yet I knew when Caroline and Brad, or Caroline and, and my son would come to a certain point when their children were the ages they were, that would probably come up for them. And then they would have to deal with Oh my gosh, how could mom ever leave us? Which they both went through. They didn't talk to me a whole lot about it, but I know they talked to each other about it at the time. Uh, but they've talked to me since what that was like. Um, yeah. yeah. Isn't it interesting how, um, you know, you're talking about forgiving the woman that you used to be. And it seems like the woman you used to be was lacking some pretty important information. Totally. Yeah. I was, I totally was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that once we understand that we make decisions without all the information, it's Mm -hmm. like, well, of course, of course, we make, we make decisions with the information that we have. And so I could see how that can lead you to forgiving the woman that you used to be. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of peace in that. So, um, so it sounds like this book has been so amazing for both of you in terms of healing. What is your relationship like now? Well, from my perspective, (laughs) from my perspective, I think I feel like we have a wonderful relationship. I feel like, like we can tell each other how we feel. We have more laughs than I can even, we just, I can't even describe it. I feel like I can totally be myself with Caroline and I feel like Caroline can be herself and that we totally, we get each other now. Oh my Um, God, you're going to make me cry. That's amazing. (laughs) it's, 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 It's hard to even describe what it's like but it mm. it's just it's incredible. Yeah, that uh, that is so profound to me. Like number 1 you know who you are. Mm-hmm. And number 2 that you feel safe with her that you can that you can totally. be yourself. That's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Caroline, how would you how, how would you answer that? Yeah, well, to give you a picture, so every time, well the last couple of times my mom has visited in Tennessee, <laughs> which I love it every single time. We go to a tattoo and piercing parlor and we get tattoos. <laughs> and we are kind uh, of like mom. <laughs> you and if you're watching, you might you get be some like, nipple oh. piercings. Yeah. <laughs> you might be like, oh, really? Um, but it's so funny because we go in there and we have the same woman and it, we've just done, you know, like mild, oh, you know, ears. Midwestern. Okay. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. We're thinking about the, the belly button next. But it's so funny because we go in there together, you know, and if you're watching, you notice my mom and I actually have the same part happening, which wasn't <laughs> yeah. intentional. Oh. <laughs> I know. And you're at the same length. You kind of got the I same know, we're color, like, both oh. in black. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So, 
but we we have a lot of fun and one of my favorite things to do now is like if one of us are having a bad day or something's going on we'll just tell the other like you are not your trauma <laughs> so oh, like my wow. mom said you know we're we're really like living this and walking this out and yeah. i think Ooh. that's so amazing to be able to do together and yeah she's she's my best friend and she has been for a really, really long time. So again, it's, it's truly like a dream come true to be able to do this. So if someone's listening and is like, you know, is this relationship worth going after? Or if you have an inkling in your mm-hmm. heart that maybe there needs to be some resolution there, like do that while you can. Do it. Because yes. you know, I lost my dad in September and that didn't happen, you know? And so I'm, I'm working through some of that now and we can still do that when our loved ones pass. But if you have the opportunity today to start working towards healing and some relationship that you have, um, and maybe that relationship is with yourself. I mean, my, my encouragement to the person who's watching or listening is like, do that work towards yeah. that. Yeah. Listen, it does start with self first. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, how can you com- communicate your needs if you don't know what they are first? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's interesting, you, you know, there's, there's a book called mother hunger mm-hmm. and, uh, I don't know if you're familiar, but uh, man, even the title, when I first heard it, mm-hmm. it really resonated with me because I feel like as women, um, and probably the dudes too, I, I don't know how they feel half the time. So <laughs> I'll just set that aside <laughs> for a second. Me. Yeah. If the dudes <laughs> are listening, you can reach out and let me know. But like, there's this need, just like such a desperate need for approval from the mom, right? Mm -hmm. And like, we have like this, even if mom is abusive, I was just talking to somebody and this comes actually, this comes up a lot actually in the work that I do is that even if you have an abusive parent, mother or father, that deep down that little one will always crave the love. Like we still, even if our parents are abusive, we still love them. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, and so I really feel like, you know, there is a, the acknowledgement of the craving for the love and approval of the parent, but this sounds like the actual, I'm very pragmatic, like the actual, how you do it, like the implementation of ideas, like we can have theory and mm-hmm. ideas, but is it fair to say that the book is sort of like the how? Like, this is how you implement, this is how you start walking the path so that, you know, to like, um, resolve your past trauma, identify what you really want and need from others, how to communicate. That's kind of how, how, what it is. There are, yes, there are definitely these strategies and rhythms exactly like you're sharing how to do the thing, because I feel like we do, and I know for me personally in recovery, I like to talk a lot about what's going on and and that's beautiful. But what we try to do in the story is like, let's use storytelling, but then let's also provide some of these evidence-based tools and ways that we can actually, that we can take action. Action. Yes. All about the action. And so mm-hmm. that that's amazing. Um, I was going to ask you a little earlier, and then I forgot until you just mentioned the rhythms. Can you kind of define that for me a little bit and maybe give some of the examples of how that plays out, like what it is? How to, how sure, to absolutely. Well, I don't want to give too much away because oh, come on, folks to get the book. <laughs> um, but the, the rhythms are really <laughs> these strategies to help us move towards healing. And so I'm going to give you an example. So one of them that has been super helpful for me um, and my mom has been working through boundaries. And we've kind of touched a little bit on that today with relationships, Um, but specifically in boundaries, you know, for me, it was really transformational when I learned that I could have boundaries, that I could Mm. have agency and that I had choices. You know, I could choose how I responded to certain relationships and situations, and I could say no. You know, and it Mm -hmm. sounds maybe a little simple, but I'm feeling like people will identify with this who've been through trauma. It's like, I just, that ability to make a decision was gone. It was like, Mm -hmm. especially with men, you like me and you're giving me attention that I'm going to, you know, do the thing. It's on. Right. Exactly. Even, (laughs) you know, I don't like you and you repulse me. I can't say no. So here we go. Right. Buckle up. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and I have to like, really, we have frank conversations about, because 
you know, I've worked and I've, I've worked with and know so many women specifically who struggle with that. Yeah. It's like, it's like, you know, sitting in a meeting, oh my gosh, you know, you don't have a job, you've got your fifth DUI and you're going to treat me like garbage. Like, sounds like my type, you know, like this is good for me. Uh, no, it's not good for us. It's not good for us, but we need to learn how we can help protect and, and develop those boundaries. So we talk a little bit about assertive communication like mm-hmm. ways to communicate in healthy in health in healthy ways, how to stand up for ourselves, and hopefully through storytelling, you know, share with readers. Look, like we're valuable, we are mm-hmm. beautiful, valuable women, um, and and folks, and we deserve to be able to say no, to set boundaries, and to make decisions that are healthy and good for us, and will help move us forward in life, and not hold us yeah. back and keep us tethered. So. Rhythm one, I gave you a little sneak peek. The rest of them, yeah, I think rhythm one's like a boundary. Get, yeah, yeah, get get a book and um, <laughs> discover them. <laughs> um, I was giggling when you were talking about like the ability to say no. It, I flashed on this experience. I was at a meeting, and I was like. I, I think I was kind of like, I don't like my job. And this guy's like, well, we have this out. It was an old dude. And he was like, well, we have this outfit. Like they used to call work jobs, like companies, mm-hmm. like an outfit. Well, we got this outfit and there's a bunch of grumpy old guys and they're kind of a, abusive and it only pays, you know, I forgot what it was. It wasn't very much, uh, but, but, uh, you could, you could interview for it if you want to. And I was like, why the fuck would I want to interview for that? Like, you know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> absolutely not. But I realized in that moment, it's like, oh, there was a time that I would have said yes to that mm-hmm. because somebody offered it to me. Mm-hmm. Like here's a steaming pile of poop. Mm-hmm. Here you go. I, I would have just been like, oh, okay. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to say no. So it's interesting um, when you're talking about boundaries, you know, to me, it's like, oh, you have, first we have to recognize we have a need mm-hmm. or, or that we have a preference, you know, like with the guys that mm-hmm. ask you out, just because someone asks you out doesn't mean you have to say yes yeah. type of stuff. But like with, with moms, um, I was trying to think of, was how, were there situate? Can you think of a, an example with mom where you were like, maybe she wanted something from you, or was communicating something that you were just like, no, thank you, or because you you mentioned um, assertive communication, which I think can be misinterpreted as aggressive. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, in in the book, we kind of walk through a little bit more about what that is. And I think you touched on it too, but being able to communicate directly. And so like, if we're having a conversation, so when things were coming up for my mom, as she's reading some of the things I wrote, you know, just being really present and listening, Mm -hmm. and then explaining clearly and, you know, assertively, not aggressively, but like, this is what I felt. And I still I have so much forgiveness and love for you. And, and I, I don't have anger and resentment you know, that those two things can be true, but being able to communicate that way, you know, not super like emotionally, but just like real, real and truthful. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's one example I can think of. But again, I'm sure I could have thought of a lot more back when I was super unhealthy and our, you know, my mom, when we were in that one bedroom apartment, things got a little volatile. Um, She found the peach snops and, you know, didn't find some other things, but, you know, today our relationship is, is so much more healed and different, but yeah, that was one of the examples that kind of came to mind. Mom, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. But I I was just thinking as you were talking, I was thinking back to my childhood and how, how we, we just didn't talk about things. I mean, it's, it's the old elephant in the room. It's like, you know, what's happening. it really didn't happen. You know, why do you think it happened? Be quiet. Um, wow. And so I, gr- I grew up just, you know, not talking, especially to- not talking about anything that was, that would get anyone upset. And, and sometimes in the family, it's still, sometimes it's still there. It's like, and we have to, you know, you have to catch yourself. I can say this, you know, I, I can say this, even though I know it might not feel good for the other person, but it's okay for me to say that. So I still have to go through some of the, the self-talk with myself. Um, but with Caroline, it's, we just, 
we go there. We go to the places that aren't always easy to go to. And we talk about things that aren't easy to talk about. Um, and, and, and you can heal through that. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you both respect and honor each other's feelings, even though your interpretations of maybe an experience can be different, right? Like when you were talking about, um, you know, talking with things and family, you said something about like, oh, that didn't happen. And it, it, that just means it didn't happen for you. Like mm -hmm. the person saying, oh, that didn't happen. They, it didn't happen for them, mm -hmm. but it sounds like you two are able to just hear, listen to each other's experience and acknowledge each other's feelings and be supportive and don't eat like is it true that you don't kind of get hung up on each other's experiences it's like acknowledge validate and move on i think yeah. that's true we do, we just yeah 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 it's been helpful to read to read her writings and to know and to mm -hmm. listen to her and know things that did happen and it's like that happened then it's now um, and just put it in the past yeah. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge, validate, move on. I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, this has been so heartwarming for me to just be a witness to how the two of you have been able to navigate the past um, and turn your pain into something that's so productive and helpful for others. Um, you guys are like the, I'm going to hold you up as the example of um, a positive possibility. They say that when families are dysfunctional, they're all dysfunctional in their own unique way. But when families are healthy, they're all the same. There's love, there's patience, there's support and validation, acknowledgement. I, I can really see that in the both of you and how you've decided to take responsibility for yourselves and, and, and move forward. Such a, such a beautiful example. Oh. Thank you for saying that. That is so touching. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it that is, is so touching. Yeah, yeah. It's wonderful to be here with, with you all and just to be able to share this book with, with everyone. And when we really hope that other folks can experience um, the truth that you can heal from trauma. Absolutely. Sometimes we just need an example of how to do it. Sometimes it's easier to do it when, you know, when you've seen somebody do it come before you. So listen, thank you so much for your time today. I will put links um, to the book in the show notes and, and all the, and all the things that, that you do. And um, listen, thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to talking with you both again soon. Oh, thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you. Last thing before you go, you can follow the podcast on Instagram for daily inspiration at ODAT Podcast. And if you'd like to get a bi weekly email from me with recommendations to books I'm reading, meditations I love, or other recovery podcasts, just sign up for it at odatchat.com. That's O D A A T chat.com. And if you do, I hope you enjoy it.